done tryna make y'all comfortable That's right. For the record, you ain't tryna grow, then it's done for you That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way, all the way. For the record, ain't tryna link no time to wait safe and healthy and if you're new here welcome I'm Michaela Caroline and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys this new system that I created for myself to get my thoughts and my life together so I have really reevaluated the way I've been doing everything the way I make my list the way I track our bills the way I track everything and I'm really gonna go over all of that with you guys because I felt like my life just really needed a good reevaluation you know you just gotta step back sometimes and just tell yourself like this isn't working i'm gonna go ahead and go through kind of like my journal organization so let's go ahead let's get into it so the first thing that i decided was that i really needed to keep track of to-do lists uh, our bills i really wanted to track like habits i was trying to pick up so i decided to go back to bullet journaling and if you've been watching my channel i did bullet journaling back in the fall time and it was honestly, I did it just too much, like too extravagant. I just kind of created spreads that I felt like were trendy at that time and weren't actually functional to me. So I went a while without doing it and I recently decided that I really wanted to try it again. And I started looking at minimal journal design. In this video, you'll see that I actually started this bullet journal in the middle of the month of May and I don't care. Like, I don't want to wait for another month to start. I literally just wanted to start now. So if you are watching this like in the middle of a month or you feel like you have to wait until the beginning of a new month, that's total crap. Do not do that. Don't sit there and wait for a date. If you want to start it today, start it today. I don't care if it's the 15th, 17th, 2nd, 1st. I don't give it. Start it. <laughs> That's what I did. I started this one. I created it on May, May 17th. So the first thing that I created was a key because I wanted to uh, tell myself how many dots were across and how many were up and down. Just that way whenever I go to create like a monthly spread, or try to divvy it up evenly, I can like see how many, I can just flip to it instead of sitting there and counting every dot, I can just go to it and see exactly how many dots per square, per whatever I need to do. So the next spread that I did was a overall monthly calendar and this is where I put birthdays, I put our bills, I just wanted to do it super simple. So I just divvied up the squares evenly for each day and wrote it all down and I feel like it's very minimal but I actually really like looking at it because it's not so overwhelming to me. Me. and um, I just feel like it's really simple it's really functional so did that and these next two spreads I actually uh, saw in pick up limes minimalist bullet journal that she did for 2020 and I thought it was such a good idea and I really want to get in get myself consistent with journaling and I really feel like these two spreads will get you used to jotting like writing something every day so that you can kind of ease yourself into journaling and that's really what I wanted to do. So the first one is gratitude. So I went through and I numbered each square with the day. So there's 31 days in May and every single day I'm going to write down something that I'm grateful for and it can be multiple things. It could be one thing, it can be literally anything. Just I really feel like that's a really good exercise and we forget sometimes, you know, to be grateful and to kind of stop and realize what we do have versus focusing on what we don't. So I felt like that was a really great spread and I really wanted to incorporate it. And then right next to that is a memories page and she did this one and I thought it was so cool because I think it'd be so cool to look back on. I want to use this as a reflection tool too, too, like I said. So I feel like it'd be really cool to like flip through and look through all the months and be like, oh, I did this this day, or oh, we did that. So, or oh, I remember that. So the next one I feel like is very up to the person. I 
extended it over two pages just in case I decided on another habit within the month that I wanted to start tracking. So I watched Pick Up Lime's video and she explains how you should use a habit tracker as a way to be aware of what you're doing. So don't get so restricted and tied down to it because it's literally just a way for you to be aware of how often you're doing something. So if you create one and you never fill it out or you fill it out once or twice, don't beat yourself up. It's totally okay. It doesn't matter. This is just something that is going to help you kind of visually see like, oh, I'm doing this this often or oh, I did this this month. Like, it just kind of gives you an overall perspective of what's going on. I only wrote down four things so far. I'm sure there will be more, but I really just want to focus on these four things. So I did reading, stretching and yoga, working out, and journaling because I feel like those are the four habits that are really gonna help me. And I just color in the square of the day that I do it. So yeah, it's a really easy way to do a habit tracker and you don't look at it and get completely overwhelmed. And I feel like it's pretty functional too. So I did that. The next page, one of my favorites is a brain dump. I think of so many different ideas, things I wanna research, things I wanna look up, things I want to get done, like whatever. So <laughs> I created a brain dump for the month of May and I already wrote down my uh, current subscriber count just because when I look back, I wanna see how many subscribers I had at that point. So yeah, this is just kind of where any random thoughts go. Really anything <laughs> that your heart desires can go here. I think it's really good to have a page like that that you can literally just jot whatever <laughs> and then the next page is just like a weekly overview uh, this one's for the 17th through the 23rd which is the current week and i just did goals and intentions i wrote four down so it was just to film two youtube videos to read my book every day to do one real estate chapter and then to move my body every single day so that's not just like a workout like i don't want to say i want to work out every day i just want to get my body movement i want to go for a walk go for a bike wide bike <laughs> Go for a bike ride, go for a walk, uh, do some yoga, do some stretching. I don't care, run up and down the stairs. As long as I'm moving my body, I'm happy. That's just kind of where I wanted to give it some flexibility and practicality. And the next thing is, this is a new way that we kind of want to do our meals for the week. So I always go into the grocery store and I feel overwhelmed, even though I've made a few videos about grocery shopping and healthy eating and it changes quite a bit. So I saw Allison Bickerstaff do this and her and her husband, they come up with two ideas for breakfast, two for lunch, and two for dinner. So I really just kind of wanted to do that because I feel like it would give us a lot more structure going to the grocery store. It would keep us on a budget. It would keep us on a list. And I just really feel like it'd be a lot more functional. And that way we can write down the ideas for each meal and just kind of look back at it and be like, oh, okay, so these are options for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, whatever. Or if I want to go back and look at it like in the future and see what we did that worked, I can look at it and get some ideas or inspiration. And um, but yeah, I think it's a really cool idea and I thought she was onto something. So we're gonna try that out and see how it goes. And lastly is a weekly check-in. So I don't know if I want to do this by day, I think. I definitely want to do it the beginning of the week, like that Sunday or Monday. So I may do it every day. I may do it a couple times during the week. I don't really know. I may do it just once. Whatever. I just whatever gets jotted down there gets jotted down there. I just kind of want to see where my mindset was at the beginning of the week, and maybe any correlation for like to see how much I get done on the to-do lists and like how much if I actually reach those goals and intentions. So feel like it'd be a really good reference point. So the next thing that I created is a the weekly layout. So I just divvied it up with the days as far as the amount of dots go and I split Saturday and Sunday because everyone knows you just have less to do those days. I did three to do's for each day and I did dots underneath because that can be tasks that can be moved to the next day or just to later on that week. So it gives some kind of flexibility and I also do recommend writing in pencil for some of these because it's just a lot easier than just setting it in stone with pen and then getting restricted to it and then just kind of letting yourself down when it doesn't get done so i would just write it in pencil until you know for sure you're going to get it done and then at the very top left i wrote a quote and to no surprise it's from atomic habits it's james clear your commitment to the process determines your progress that was in my last video i'll link it on whichever side i don't remember but uh yeah i thought it was a really good quote and it's going to keep me on track so every day i go to make a to-do list i see that quote and i get inspired and at the very top right i put which youtube videos i'm going to film this week and so far i have 
this one, which is getting my life together, kind of, if that's a thing. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. And then uh, what book I'm reading that week, which, as you can see, is The Power of Now. I feel like it's a really good weekly spread and it's not too much and um, it's very practical. And then next is a workout log. So I really want to start tracking my workouts and writing down which ones I'm doing and uh, kind of make a note which one I enjoy the most or just kind of pull different exercises from different ones and create my own. Yeah, so I thought it'd be really cool just to like jot down which days I worked out that week and what I did. And I did five lines because I know I'm not gonna work out seven days a week. Five is, five would be good, but if I don't fill all five out, I don't really care. If I fill one out, I'll be happy. So, which as you can tell from the beginning of this video, we can fill out Monday, so. I gotta go in and do that but I thought it was a cool idea just to go back and see what exercises I did that week or how I moved my body that day or um, I don't know I just thought it was kind of cool and I kept it separate from the to-do list too so it's not a whole bunch of stuff being written on one day I can just kind of see all the workouts together see my all of my to-do lists together so it really just keeps it organized but those are just the main spreads that I'm going to be using this month and if I add any I can definitely tell you guys next month and I can like update you guys on what works and what doesn't, but this for me right now is working and it's really, really making me happy because it's taken me so long to find something that works. <laughs> different main journals so that was the first bullet journal my planner a uh, do list that kind of journal so this is my YouTube bullet journal and not everyone's gonna have one of these which I totally understand but if you have like school or if you have work or anything like that um, this is just kind of where all of that would go so this is where I brainstorm videos I have uh, video list ideas I lay out how my videos are going to be filmed I make checklists of what needs to be filmed um, if anything I need to buy for a video like this is just where it all goes and a lot of those spreads are very like I want to be able to just jot it down and I want it separate from my planner so I just wanted to have its own bullet journal and I used this the most for that and I just want to kind of keep using it for that so it's consistent so this is my planner this is my YouTube bullet journal or work bullet journal I guess and last journal that I have so it's only three um, is my journal where I just write my feelings or thoughts or whatever mush decides to just okay let's throw it what <laughs> I was holding it upside down but this is just where I write all the mush that comes out of my head and bring it into the physical realm it's just a lined journal I got it for like five bucks at Target a couple of years ago but it's nice it does the job I love the color so I would recommend having a journal separate from your planner just because it's more private and if anyone were to ever look at my planner I don't want them to like look at my journal you know and sometimes sometimes your writing is kind of messy and you just want to get something out and I just really want to keep it separate yeah so those are the three journals that I'm currently using so yeah, and three may be too many for some people and if you just want to do the one and combine like work and your planner do that do that by all means or if you want to combine all three definitely do that i just personally like my planning separate from my work brainstorming and my like thoughts so yeah <music> So I've decided to reread The Power of Now. I read this a few years ago and it was in one of my book videos, I believe, but I just don't think I was in the right mindset to read it. Like, I don't feel like I completely comprehended it just because for one, I don't feel like I was as, I feel like I've just experienced more and I feel like it was, I feel like now's the right time to reread it. I feel like it'll all like sit differently with me if I read it now versus when I read it then. Like then I was just kind of reading it just because it was just kind of the thing to read it, you know? It was just like everyone was reading it and I just wanted to see what it was about, which I still learned things from it, but I think I just need, I need to reread this guy. I need Eckhart Tolle to just sit me down and be like, get yourself together, you know? So that's what I'm doing. I can't wait to reread it. I really, really can't. I love this book so much. <laughs> that was one way I decided to kind of re evaluate my life and reorganize it was to go not only like productivity and you know 
the journals and organization part of it, but also just my thoughts and my emotions and just kind of figuring it all out with the power of now. So I'm excited to reread it. So the last aspect of my life that I decided that needed to be changed was my skincare. I had acne whenever I was a teenager really bad. It started whenever I was probably like 12 or 13 and I have marks all over my face from it and it I've fought it ever since. It's, it still looks like I have like active breakouts just because I have so many acne scars. Um, my skin has gotten drier as I've gotten older too I've noticed and I don't really know why. I guess it, I think your skin just changes as you get older but and I naturally have very oily skin. Like I used to go to school and I'd get home and it, my face would just like be like a spotlight. It was so disgusting and it looked like that looked like an oil spill happened, like it was bad. Anyway, it's not that bad anymore and I've kind of like updated my makeup routine to where it, it I feel like my makeup routine is really good right now and it's all drugstore too. So if you guys want to see just kind of what I'm using, if you have acne prone, oily skin, um, leave it in the comments. I can definitely do that. I know it took me forever to find something that actually felt good on my face. and. It's drugstore too, which is even better. <laughs> anyway, I decided that my skincare was not good enough. I'm so tired of having to wear makeup every single day. I It's literally, I drink my coffee and then I go take like 20 minutes to do my makeup and I'm so sick of it. I don't want to do it anymore, especially whenever it gets hot and where I live, it's pretty humid. So I just can feel like a lot sometimes regardless of, you know, whatever makeup you're wearing. It can be the lightest foundation in the world. It can be powder, whatever. It'll still just feel like gross. So I just really want to get it to where I don't have to wear makeup every day. So I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of YouTube videos over the years and there's one product that always was consistent and it was The Ordinary. I was very skeptical of this brand just because it's so cheap. Like I did not understand why it was so cheap because I always thought to you know get rid of my scars I was going to have to spend thousands of dollars. I tried everything growing up. Can you stop please? Stop chewing everything, okay? Stop. Stop. Anyway, I thought I was gonna basically go into debt trying to clear up my face. So I found The Ordinary and I watched a ton of videos on it on like the order of applying it, uh, the products, uh, just before and after. Like I spent so long just making sure it was the right thing. So I bit the bullet and I got some. <laughs> I plan on like keeping a record of how it goes. So I want to do like a before and after. Before I show you the products from The Ordinary, I wanted to show you the face wash really quickly and I just used the CeraVe face wash and it has niacinamide and hyaluronic acid in there which is great for your skin, especially if you're trying to get rid of acne scars. Just a disclaimer as well, I'm not a skin expert by any means, this is just stuff that I've learned and that has worked for my face. So. But I'm just letting you know, this is just kind of how I'm updating my skincare and I'm going to see how it goes because I've been fighting it for so long. So that's why I'm doing this. Between the marks and the texture of my skin, that's really what I'm targeting. So, And I ordered a face brush from Vanity Planet. I'll put a picture of it up here somewhere. But it has yet to come in the mail. I think they've gotten like a lot of orders, so it's taking a really long time to ship. So I haven't, that's why I haven't used these products yet because I really want that to get here so that I can really start with a bare face and like really, really clean pores so that these products can do their magic. And the reason I chose that one is because it comes with three different brushes. One's for exfoliating, one is for daily cleansing, and then it also has the silicone attachment to it, which um, does not accumulate any bacteria. It's super easy to clean. And the way their case is too, after you use one of the brush heads, you just put it in the case and it's like aerated and ventilated so it doesn't grow any bacteria or mildew. So I'm super pumped about it. I got the pink one and I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail so I can use all these skincare products. But that's the worst thing is ordering something online and waiting for it to get here. It's such a first world problem. I know, I understand that. But still, the first thing that I got from The Ordinary is the Glycolic Acid Toning Solution. So this you use right after you wash your face. This is what it looks like. It's a pretty good bottle and it comes with this little attachment too. So you can squirt it like onto a cotton pad or a piece of tissue. It visibly targets textural irregularities and lackluster tone. And the crazy thing is that that, that whole thing was only $8.70. And the reason that The Ordinary, I found out, was so cheap is because they are they don't have to go pay for studies to prove that their products work. They already have enough evidence that their stuff does work. They don't have to go pay for studies to 
prove that it works. And also their ingredients are super simple so they don't add in like the fragrances and everything that boosts the price of other skincare products. So it's really cool how they do that. But the toner, I'll read the description to you guys too so that, that way. Glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid that exfoliates the skin. The 7% toning solution offers mild exfoliation for improved skin radiance and visible clarity. The formula also improves the appearance of skin texture and continued use. I definitely need help with my texture of my skin, so I'm excited to try this out. The next thing that I got, I was super excited about, and it's all over YouTube, is the niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%. Yeah, so it regulates sebum and minimizes pores. So a lot of reasons acne is caused is because of the overproduction of oil in your skin, which is called sebum. So this mimics sebum so that your skin knows to, hey, don't overproduce oil so you don't break out as much. And it also helps with the texture of your skin. And then this one that I got, the 60 milliliters is $10. And it says, niacinamide, which is vitamin B3, is indicated to reduce the appearance of skin blemishes and congestion. A high 10% concentration of this vitamin is supported by the formula by zinc salt and pyrolidone carboxylic acid. I butchered that, I'm sorry. To balance visible aspects of sebum activity. I'm really excited to try this product. So this next one was a toss up between this and hyaluronic acid just by itself and I ended up going with the alpha arbutin 2% with hyaluronic acid in there and this is specifically for hyperpigmentation and dark spots which is exactly what I need. It's the same kind of deal with the as the niacinamide, it's just a dropper. So this bottle was $8.90 and the reason I chose to go with this one instead of just the pure hyaluronic acid uh, which is also in the CeraVe face wash as well as niacinamides, that's why I like it so much, so it kind of like doubles up. But um, the reason I chose this one is because the alpha arbutin, like I said, targets hyperpigmentation. So I get the benefits of the hyaluronic acid plus the benefits of alpha arbutin as well. I'm going to go ahead and read the description to you really quickly of exactly what it does. So alpha arbutin reduces the looks of spots and hyperpigmentation. It's used at a high 2% concentration versus a standard concentration of 1% and supported with a next generation form of hyaluronic acid for enhanced delivery. Alpha arbutin is much stronger in effect than arbutin or beta arbutin. Never heard of it before I found it on the website and I started doing some research and it was used in a lot of the videos that I was watching and it really helped some girls out so I'm excited to try it and I really really hope it helps. I will definitely be keeping you guys updated though for sure. And the last thing that I got is organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. So it just comes in a 30 milliliter bottle and it is $9.80. And um, this isn't a necessity, but I, it has some really good qualities to it, so I really, really wanted to get it. And I'll read exactly what it does to you guys, too. So this formulation uses 100% pure rosehip seed oil that is both cold-pressed and organic. Rosehip seed oil is rich in linoleic acid, linoleic acid and pro-vitamin A, all of which degrade when the oil extraction process involves heat, which is why it's cold-pressed. While cold pressed extraction is complex, it preserves all of the quality of this important oil which has been shown to reduce signs of photoaging and many other skin conditions. So it's really overall good for your skin and has vitamins in there so I figured it was a great thing to have and I've heard great things about it and it was also in some of the routines that I saw in the videos where um, girls said that it worked so I decided to go ahead and get it. And as far as my moisturizer, it, I use the Lubriderm moisturizer, but I think after that runs out, I'm going to go get the CeraVe moisturizer. They're both really good. I just kind of want to stick with CeraVe because the face wash works so well. Alright guys, so that's just kind of the update with how I went through multiple aspects of my life and just kind of reorganized them and reevaluated them to where it, I don't know, just to where it would be more organized and more efficient and eventually be more successful to push me where I want to get in my life so if this video helped you out at all please leave it in the comments down below because I would love to know and if you got any inspiration from this video or if you tried any of these products again I have not tried those skin products yet I will be trying them and I'll let you guys know how they do I just wanted to show you guys what I got to try and kind of the direction I'm going if you guys are all doing amazing if you have any organizational tips of your own also leave this in the comments because I would love any any feedback that you guys have or any inspiration from you so thank you so so much I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night and I will see you guys in my next video bye